Before we get started, let me leave a little disclaimer. This video does not contain Brandon Lee's death footage. The purpose of this video is to educate, entertain, and inform. Sorry if you click this link thinking it contained the footage. It's hard to title a video like this without making it look like clickbait. Anyways, enjoy the video. I see you have made your decision. Now let's see you enforce it. Ah, oh, this is already boring the shit out of me. Kill him! Hello and welcome to the Lost Media Chronicles, a show that discusses various lost movies, music, art, you name it. It's been a while since I've tackled the morbid stuff on here. I think the last morbid thing I covered was the Dawn Brand show footage two years ago. Well, it's time again to dip my feet into the world of the Forbidden. This is the story of the footage of Brandon Lee's death on the set of The Crow. For the unfamiliar, Brandon Lee was a famous actor and martial artist. He was the son of Bruce Lee, one of the most influential martial artists out there. Bruce helped redefine fight choreography, even outside of the martial arts genre. Unfortunately, he passed away at the age of 32 from an allergic reaction to a tranquilizer after a brain injury too complicated to talk about in a short video. Brandon carried his father's legacy, and for a few years it looked like he was going to be a sensation. He acted in a few small roles in both film and television from 1985 to roughly 1991. His first major Hollywood role was for Showdown in Little Tokyo, a buddy cop comedy starring Dolph Lundgren. He signed a multi-film deal with 20th Century Fox, with his first starring role being in 1992's Rapid Fire. The films he starred in weren't critically loved, with many pointing out that Lee's charisma was being held back by the scripts he was working with. Lee sought to change this. Now we get to go off on a different tangent and talk about The Crow. It was originally a 1989 comic book written by James O'Barr. In it, a rock star named Eric Draven is murdered alongside his fiancée who was also raped. Draven is brought back from the dead and seeks revenge by working his way through the chain of command of the gang responsible. He is seemingly immortal, with anyone's attempt to harm him failing, at least until they realize his one weakness through a crow that follows him around. Now, the comic is absolutely violent and it hasn't aged very well and a lot of people these days don't like it all that much. Even Obar himself regrets writing the story, stating that it offered him absolutely no catharsis. The film, on the other hand, is absolutely worth checking out and probably one of the best films of the 1990s. The Crow entered production in either 1991 or 1992. Obar's first meetings with Paramount involved them wanting to bastardize the comic by turning it into a musical starring Michael Jackson. After finally talking them down, Alex Proyas was brought on as director with Brandon Lee as the lead star. Little did Proyas know that this production would be an infamous disaster. To start, the film was seriously under budget at just $23 million, with production members stating it needed at least $30 million. The effects crew found themselves cutting corners constantly, with only $15,000 reserved for them. Many of the cast and crew members were going through serious cocaine habits. During a shoot, someone sneezed and Lee quipped, someone just lost $50. Filming was also done in North Carolina, a right-to-work state, meaning that the studio could bypass many union rules set up by Hollywood to protect employees. Many crew members felt overworked and stressed throughout production. Making matters worse, a hurricane pounded North Carolina, causing many scenes to be filmed indoors rather than shutting down production. Even before Lee's infamous accident, the set was rife with on-set injuries. On the first day of filming, a carpenter suffered serious upper body burns. On another day, a manual worker somehow managed to get a screwdriver embedded into his hand. A truck carrying filming equipment burst into flames, almost burning the driver alive. After falling through a roof, a stuntman broke several ribs. A rigger was electrocuted due to faulty wiring on set. A set sculptor, upset with the mismanagement of the production, drove his car through the props room, endangering cast and crew. 
Many workers also came down with serious illness from the hurricane weather and were pressured to keep working. The most infamous production detail, however, is the most tragic. With eight days left of filming on March 31st, 1993, Lee was ready for one of the film's many elaborate action sequences. A prop gun was to be fired in his direction. Now, what exactly happened involves some explaining of ballistics. Films require different types of fake bullets depending on what is being shown on screen. The Crow required realistic looking bullets. The prop crew achieved this with an unorthodox method. They took live rounds, emptied the bullets from their cases, poured out the gunpowder, and loaded the bullets back into the cartridge. This creates a realistic looking gunshot without putting the actors' lives at risk. The prop gun that killed Lee in question was used in a prior shoot where the gun wasn't properly cleaned. A bullet became stuck inside of the prop gun. The hot gases that were created from when the trigger was pulled caused the bullet to become dislodged and it came flying out with enough force to impact Brandon. He was hit in his right side and he collapsed and started groaning. The rest of the cast and crew were unaware of what was going on thinking that he was just acting or they were preoccupied with what they were doing. Then Proyas yelled cuts and it became clear that something was seriously wrong. Brandon was then rushed to the hospital via ambulance where he later died of his injuries despite emergency surgery to try to remove the bullets. This led to the difficult decision of the crew of whether or not to finish the film. Ultimately, they cobbled together the few remaining scenes featuring Lee by using prior shot fight choreography footage, CGI, and body doubles. There are scenes in the finished film that are affected by this, but unless a viewer is paying close attention, it's hard to notice. It was released on May 13, 1994 to critical praise and debuted at number one in the box office for that weekend. It's a cult classic and one of the best films of the decade. It's tragic though, seeing as Lee's performance shined like a diamond and his career was cut short. He could have been something legendary. And let's face it, how can you not like that man? Look at that gorgeous smile on his face. Lee's death was caught on camera. Proyas insists he destroyed the footage. However, there are some claims that say that that is not true. A few crew members state that they recall a cameraman who held onto the footage with the intention of selling it. Speculation also states that the footage couldn't have legally been destroyed, as it was more than likely used as evidence by authorities. However, this doesn't mean that Proyas didn't disobey orders, or that the footage wasn't destroyed after investigation. Multiple fake images of Lee's alleged dead body on set have leaked online. The footage has never surfaced, and out of respect for Lee, that's probably for the best. Of course, that doesn't stop the morbidly curious who want to see it. If it still exists, it's unlikely to see the light of day, and it's sitting in a vault somewhere collecting dust. You can't fault Proyas for destroying it. As just a few years prior, footage of Vic Morrow and two child actors getting decapitated from a helicopter on the set of Twilight Zone the movie had surfaced on an edition of Faces of Death. No one in the crew wanted Lee's death footage to see the same fate. This is one of the cases where I can say I'm glad it's still lost. Most morbid stuff like this just leaves more questions unanswered, and that's just the nature of tragic events like this. Now that's about it for this episode, however I would like to know if you guys would like to see some videos on troubled productions like this. I'm getting a little burnt out of lost media as of recently, and well let's face it my vinyl show just doesn't seem to have that many viewers, so maybe I should try something a little different and tackle more troubled Hollywood productions or just troubled productions in general like this since they make such an intriguing story. If you want to see more videos like that, definitely comment on this video and let me know. And of course, be sure to subscribe and watch more of my videos if you liked what you saw here. Thanks again for watching and see you later.